Pirates did not play yesterday. They were traveling to New York City and to start a two-city, six-game road trip. Tonight, it's the first of three against the New York Mets. From Flushing, New York, the Pirates and the Mets play ball. Greg Brown along with Bob Walk and Robbie and Smikowski. The Pirates try to end a season-high five-game losing streak tonight. Jamison Tyone will be on the hill. We'll talk about him in just a moment, but first let's talk about how he got here because the Pirates placed Garrett Cole on the disabled list, and Bob, we kind of knew this was coming. Yeah, we definitely uh, saw something like this co coming, but really it's kind of a good thing, uh, the, the announcement. It's just a muscle strain in the tricep, and anytime you see your ace walk off the field, you kind of fear for the worst, like, oh, no. Well, being a muscle strain, hopefully in a couple weeks, just some rest, he'll be just fine. That's our Allegheny Health Network injury update. Meanwhile, yeah, Jamison Tyone, who made his Major League debut at PNC Park last week against these New York Mets, will try it again. A no decision his last time, but he pitched very well. Yeah, it was definitely a good start for him, especially when you consider it was his first Major League start to go out and do what he did. I mean, that really is, is very good in my eyes. He was able to throw all of his pitches, he used them all in the strike zone, and then he's always had that great mound presence. You couldn't tell that it was just his first trip out there on a big league mound. He really uh, did a great job, a great mound presence, as I said. Look forward to seeing him do it uh, again tonight. That was Wednesday, the night before the Pirates swept the Mets in a twi-night doubleheader. One of those games, the Bucks found a way to beat Jacob DeGrom. Well, DeGrom is one of the best pitchers in the league. He's been striking out a lot of people of late. You can see there what he does here at City Park. Always tough, but I'm hoping the Pirate hitters can take him to the barber tonight. Jacob DeGrom and the Pirates going to try and beat the right-hander of the New York Mets. It is game one of the three-game series here in Flushing, New York. The Pirates have done a good job against these Mets over the last couple years. They like to meet the Mets. We'll talk more about it coming up. Tyon, both coming against the New York Mets. As we mentioned just before going to our last break, the Pirates have done well against these Mets. You look where they are since 2015, Bob. Hey, yeah, you look at those uh, the, the team batting average. The Mets hitting 197. I mean, wow, that is just shutting the, the other club down. And uh, at any time you don't even hit 200, you're not going to win very many games, and the Mets haven't. Uh, but well, also now when you're playing the Mets with their starting pitching, you got to kind of win a pitcher's duel. So that's what we're uh, looking forward to tonight. Game one of three. Andrew McCutcheon and company getting ready to take on the Mets in the first of this three game series should be fun. We'll send it back to the studios for a game break.
is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network, Health for All, by Bordis and Bordis, official legal partners of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Visit BordisLaw.com. And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks! Hey, Buckos! Let's go, Bucks! Pirates Let's and their fans. Yeah, go, Jameson. Well aware that Jameson Tyone will be on the hill making his second major league start. And he'll be opposed by the young right hander Jacob DeGrom, the National League's rookie of the year two years ago. An all star last season and part of this outstanding starting rotation for the Mets. They are 34 and 28 now on the year. They trail the Washington Nationals in the National League East by five games. And they've got their manager back. Terry Collins, a little bit of a scare. They were in Milwaukee. And he was a little disoriented before their game against the Brewers on Sunday. They rushed him to the hospital. He stayed overnight for tests, said he feels great. Doctors cleared him. And it didn't find any cause for concern. So Terry Collins back here in New York where he led this Mets team to the National League pennant last year surprised a lot of people. Check out the Pirates starting lineup with Clint Hurdle one time met himself. Grab four starting lineup. Looks like this John Jaso will be at first base with Andrew McCutcheon in the two hole in center Gregory Polanco in right Starling Marte last nine games hitting 469. Chung Ho Gung is at third. Josh Harrison at second. Jordy Mercer is at short. Chris Stewart behind the plate. And Jamison Tyone on the hill. Take a look at the, the Grom's numbers. He's really picked up the strikeouts of late. He got 56 on the year. 33 of those have come in his last 25 innings of work. So he has uh, got that uh, strikeout pitch going in. Uh, obviously, he's one of the best, as you just mentioned, uh, Greg, in the league. And anytime you go up against him, you know you're you're going to have your work cut out for you. You just got to uh, work away at him and out pitching. Well, his defense, brought to you by Honda, has Ioannis Cespedes in center field. Alejandro De Anza is in left with Curtis Granderson in right. Wilmer Flores, James Loney on the corners of the infield. Here's James Loney. Astrubal Cabrera is at short. Kelly Johnson has returned to the Mets. He's at second. Kevin Ploiecki behind the plate. Neil Walker not in the starting lineup. He's been bothered by a, a back issue. Uh, we understand he would be available to pinch hit. So it's a beautiful night for baseball here in Queens as the Pirates and Mets meet in the first of this three game series. Pirates try to snap a five game losing streak. They've dropped 12 of their last 16 games. And at the moment just one game over 500. So they really want to start winning series again. Beginning with tonight. The Cubs are taking on the Nationals in D.C. The Cubs. Eight and a half in front of St. Louis. The Pirates 11 and a half back of the first place Cubs in the central. John Jason went four for eight against the Mets last week at PNC Park in that three game series. <laughs> 80 degrees at game time. Couple of strikes. Hunter Wendelstead behind the plate. Over at first base, it's Ben May. At second trip, Gibson. Jerry Lane, the crew chief at third. There is Jerry Lane. Veteran crew chief. Been around a long time. You know, looking down at uh, Hunter Wendelstadt behind the plate from our point of view, it almost kind of reminds me of his dad, those mm -hmm. big broad shoulders. Yeah. His dad, Harry, a long time umpire in the major leagues. His son Hunter behind the plate. Two and two. In addition to all the strikeouts, DeGrom had a streak going of not walking 
anybody for a while. He's only given up four home runs. And weekly hit to second, Kelly Johnson takes care of Jason. One up, one down for DeGrom. We're going to get to our Rivers Casino tips to win. Well, avoid the K's. Uh, I was just talking about DeGrom and, and how that's a big part of his game. Got to be able to get him put in play and, and stay away from those strikeouts. And uh, don't raise that uh, big apple out in center field. This will come up behind that wall when they hit a home run. Keep that down. A major part of this Mets offense is home runs. If they don't hit the ball out of the ballpark, they don't score much. The first pitch. This is something that has kind of bothered McCutcheon a bit. These they're busting them in and they're coming off the plate and the it just seems like every call is going the way of the pitcher and McCutcheon finds himself behind in the count again. You just see that reaction when you heard that first pitch called a strike. Like here we go again. Well, I think everybody knows he's had a sore hand, so they're trying to get that ball in on his hand. You can see where the first pitch was there. It was just, just a quarter of an inch, half an inch or so inside, but DeGrom got the call. Toward right, Granderson back. McCutcheon flies toward the warning track in right field. His average 240 now. Trying to uh, stay with the process. Jacob DeGrom in five days will turn 28 years old. A former ninth round pick back in 2010 out of Stetson University. Just outside Deland, Florida, where he was born and raised. Gregory Polanco hitting 296. And a base hit. Fastball lined in the left. A yeah, very aggressive swinging first pitch, but not so aggressive that he's trying to pull this ball. He gets a fastball down, away, outside half of the plate, and he just goes with it, though, the direction that it was pitched. That's the direction he hit it. Just a, a, a mark, I think, is showing how Planco has progressed as a hitter. Very professional at bat there. Aggressive, go ahead and go with that first pitch. But that doesn't mean you have to try and pull it down the right field line. Set up inside to Marte. Pitch up. Ball one on Marte. He's averaged at 332, which is third highest in the league behind Daniel Murphy, the former Met, now with the Nationals, who's hitting 367. And veteran Martin Prado with the Marlins. Also at the 332 mark, and it'll broken bat pop up. Easy for Johnson. Jacob DeGrama scoreless top of the first.
dropping two of three in Pittsburgh last week. We check out his Honda starting lineup, Alejandro Deaza, Astrubal Cabrera, and Curtis Granderson. Then you've got Cespedes batting 409 over his last five ball games. Kelly Johnson recently returned to the Mets. Wilmer Flores is at third. James Loney, Kevin Ploiecki, Jacob deGrom for the Metropolitans. Take a look at uh, Tyone's numbers from his first start where he went six innings. Not too bad for your first start. I mean not great after you've been around for a couple of years but for your first big league start did a heck of a job. Those numbers brought to you by Hyundai. Twenty four years old. And then ball one on. Alejandro de Aza. Right to the second baseman, Harrison. One up and one down. We'll bring up a Struble Cabrera, the switch hitting shortstop. Neil Walker again bothered by a sore back. Out of the lineup. I'm hoping he's able to start at some point in this series. Meantime, Tyone faces the shortstop, Cabrera. Cabrera was one out of 11 in the three game series against the Bucks last week. And towards shallow right center field and a long run for Polanco. He makes the catch. Two down. It looked like it might be a little bit of a problem off the bat. Polanco covering large piece of ground. It comes from off the screen to make that catch. <laughs> long legs of his. Couple of easy outs for Tyone. He's Curtis Granderson now. He had one hit last week against Pittsburgh. It was a home run. Right to the second baseman, Harrison. That's about as easy as it gets. A six pitch inning for Jamison Tyone. Nothing, nothing after one. birthday USAA honors those who have served in the US Army and all of our service members around the world and the uh, flags at 
half staff throughout the country and certainly here in New York. Pirates players, New York Mets players wearing silver ribbons tonight. Standing in solidarity. The terror attacks in Orlando on Sunday morning. Chung Ho Gong takes a strike. Josh Harrison next, and then Jordy Mercer. Bucks beat DeGrom. Second game of the doubleheader. Scored two runs in the second, another in the fifth. Won the nightcap by the same score they won in game one, three to one. Timely two out hit by Chris Stewart. Cole Figueroa had a, an RBI ground out. Figueroa has since been optioned to AAA. And uh, John Jaso had a big one out double in the fifth inning that scored Chris Stewart, who had a couple of hits against DeGrom. And a leadoff free pass. Got ahead of him and then never came back in the strike zone. Chung Ho showing a lot of patience. Just the 17th walk in 62 innings this season for Jacob DeGrom. One of the things that you really saw out of the Pirate hitters back in April. A lot of patience. They were never in a big hurry to swing the bat. A lot of four, five, six pitch at bats. Making those starting pitchers work hard through a lot of pitches in the first three or four innings. Jay Hay looking to get back on track. Hitless in his last 12 at bats. Did not have a hit in the series against the Cardinals after going four for nine against the Mets. Two strikes on him. So he disappointed that last call from Hunter Wendelstead. And you see why. Strikes out looking. One down. I'll bring up Jordy Mercer. We're going to get to our Barrel Automotive League leader stat. The pitchers with the lowest earned run average, their first 30 career home starts. Pretty impressive. Vita Blue. 163 with the Oakland Jose Fernandez with the Marlins at 165 then Oral Hershiser the great Dodger Dwight Gooden and Jerry Koosman former Mets and Jacob deGrom 190 here at home big time names on yeah. that list Mercer three for seven against the Mets last week with a home run. Again, it's worth repeating that DeGrom has given up only four home runs this season. Except for two hitters so far, Marte and McCutcheon. He's pretty much trying to stay away from everybody. Trying to work that outside corners. We're going to hear with Mercer. Did that to Jay Hay. End up walking Jung Ho, trying to stay away from him. Chris Stewart to follow. They're going to try and go outside again. Is the target. One and two, Bob. Yeah, that list of names you had there, they're all, you know, great stuff, good arms. But one thing they all have in common is they have the ability to have that great stuff and put it where they want it to. And that's what you see from DeGrom, too. And 
He's trying to go away. He's going away. It's, it, it's not missing too often over the plate down the middle. The stuff is just a piece of the equation when it comes to what makes a great pitcher. There are a lot of guys that can throw hard. And you go to any you know, triple A, double A ball game and you watch and there's you know bullpen guys, starters, and everybody throws 90 something. But normally it's that the command of those pitchers that sets them apart from the really the big successful starting pitchers in the big leagues. So Noah Syndergaard will and I think see that's him tomorrow. Why there's fairly high expectations for Tyone because Tyone through his minor league career has shown that command of his pitches. Thor. There's Tyone. Right side and under the glove of Kelly Johnson. Puts runners at first and second. Have to maybe wait and see the replay, but that looked like if he would have just straightened his arm out, he might have made that that play. It definitely, uh, as you said, Greg, more right under the glove. Mercer will take the hit. The official score just gave him. Kelly Johnson acquired just last week, reacquired. He's been a Met a couple of times over the last couple seasons, veteran. Neil Walker missing. Uh, Second straight start. They get news that David Wright, their third baseman captain, is considering surgery to replace a herniated disc in his neck. He's been out since the end of May. Now Chris Stewart with two on and one out. I'm not sure, but this seems that kind of a surgery would put his season in jeopardy, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, I think so. Absolutely. On a strike on Stewart. Good to see him back in the lineup. Been bothered by uh, ankle soreness. Took some foul balls off the ankle and uh, was limping into the clubhouse in PNC Park the other day. Eric Kratz started on Sunday. Francisco Cervelli had surgery to remove the hemate bone. And he's out four to six weeks, so it is Stewart and Kratz for the time being. Well, if you don't need a hamate bone, what, what's it there for in the beginning? I don't know. It's like tonsils. Yeah. Get them out of there. Gallbladder. Yeah, yeah, gallbladder. Pop up to shallow right. Granderson. Two down. Tyone will face Jacob deGrom. He opposed Noah Syndergaard on Wednesday. Not exactly getting the easy matchups no. in his first uh, <laughs> couple of starts. Struck out and dropped down a sacrifice bunt. Syndergaard now deGrom. In the minor leagues, a 111 career hitter in the Pirates minor league system, three for 27. No extra base hits, no RBIs in his minor league career. Not a lot of experience, is it? 27 at bats in your entire minor league career? No. Well, keep in mind, he did not play competitively for two years after the Tommy John surgery and then returning last season, ended up. So that's still, surgery on that's his still on the hernia surgery. Four years, 27 at bats, and four yeah. years of playing. You 
don't start hitting, I guess, till double A pitchers. One ball, two strikes. Two and two. DeGrom against Tyone. But two on and two outs in the second. A walk to Gong. And the ground single for Mercer. Well, he got another call there. That was well off the plate. DeGrom gets the call. Twitter Tuesday, just saw a shot of the bullpen. I'm Robbie Ants Mikalski. Jared Hughes was our guest tonight on Twitter Tuesday, and he was asked if he thought pitchers should be able to hit in this year's home run derby. You know, I think uh, honestly, I don't I don't feel like they should. And the only reason I feel that way is because I think a lot of hitters have worked their whole life to be able to get as good and as talented as and as, as good of hitters as they are now. So I think that these guys that have worked so hard for so long, if they want to, should have the first opportunity to hit in the home run derby. So that was a big topic of debate. Madison Bumgartner, who uh, no stranger to power uh, hitting as a pitcher, uh, has stated he wants to do it. Bruce Bochy doesn't want him to do it as manager, and uh, Jake Arrieta's name's been brought up as well as good hitting pitchers, but very well stated by Jared Hughes, Greg and Bob. It's a good topic for discussion. Should pitchers do it? What do you guys think? I love Bob's idea, Robbie. Have a, a separate home run hitting contest for a group of pitchers. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, then. Our winner takes on their winner, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll see who really can uh, yeah. hit, hit the home runs the best. That's <laughs> that would be great. The way I look at it, you know, I, the I, 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 in the old days when you used to go play the minor league teams, you would have a home run hitting contest a lot of times before the game, and many times I would see Don Robinson or Rick Roden win that home run hitting contest. So I know how far pitchers can hit mm -hmm. home runs. I mean, it would be it would be an eye opener, I think, yeah. to the fans yeah. to, to watch too. Uh, the, Francisco Liriano. Oh yeah. I, I used to talk about you know, when we first got him. I watched him take batting practice. He he had hit balls in BP that would bounce into the river, yep. bounce into the Allegheny. I mean, this guy could put on a show. Jimmy's that was Tyle, that was way, before he started putting on a show hitting. But. Yeah. Tyone striking out Cespedes to start this bottom of the second inning. There is Francisco Liriano. Oh, so Tyone. far, so good for Tyone. Yeah, he looks uh, like he's definitely going to be able to go toe to toe with Degrom. Like to see him get that strikeout too. That you know, if you want to nitpick about about things, that first start, he only had five swings and misses out of all of his pitches that he threw. So, you know, that would be one thing you'd probably love to see tonight. He'd get a few more swings and misses, and strikeouts. 
But that's I think on my part totally nitpicking. I mean as long as he kind of these first few starts that he gets in the big leagues just holds his own. I mean that that's what you're looking for. Gives his team a chance to win. Yeah, Throw strikes be aggressive. Don't show any fear of the hitters out there. No fear of the bats. Command that curveball. That's what you're looking for. You talked about this in the open that stands out. This the poise of this guy. Yeah, his mound presence is outstanding. Comes in 95 miles an hour on Kelly Johnson. Two and two. John Neese and Eric Kratz watch. Neese uh, received a tribute video from his former club, and there's a strikeout. There's a swing and a miss. Good action on that. 95 mile an hour fastball. Back to back swings and misses. Strikeouts for Tyone. This is what I'm talking about. Look at the action on this fastball to get the chase and the swing and a miss. Great bite as that ball moves down and away. That almost like a left hander's hard slider. That, that's a great pitch. You get ahead and you throw that get a, to a lefty, you're going to get a lot of swings and misses. Here's Wilmer Flores. He won the one game last week in the three game series for the Mets. Gong to Jaso. Six up, six down for Jamison Tyone. In his second big league start. Sort through all the pivotal player moves in Pirates history, loaded with earth shattering deals that involve Hall of Famers, build playoff contenders, and finalize championship teams. Count down our Pirates' 10 great trades on Inside Pirates Baseball Thursday at 6 on Root Sports. UPMC scoreboard, nothing, nothing to the third inning. And top of the order, John Jaso. Bounced out to Kelly Johnson at second to start this ball game. Oh, and DeGrom getting another call there. Pitch out of the zone. Down low. It's hard to be patient when the uh, the, the pitcher's getting calls. It almost forces you then to, to have to go up there and be a little more aggressive and swing the bat earlier and hard to bump that pitch count up. Thing is, though, if you're not afraid of getting the strike two, you're not afraid of striking out. Confidence in your confident in your ability to be a good two strike hitter and still get something put in play. You can wait and be selective and try and hit your pitch until now. Mm -hmm. Now it's two strikes. Now you got to hit the pitcher's pitch. But until you get to that point, you still have to, as the Pirates like to say, stay with the process. Try to hit what you want to hit, not what he wants to have you swing at. And look at look at where those pitches all are. All of them away. DeGrom except for two hitters so far in this lineup. It's just a way away to everybody. Except that time. 
And he got a jam shot. Gets you looking away, and then one time comes in with that good fastball of his and ties you up right on your hands. I mean, that's just classic pitching. You're setting up pitches. Once you, you get a call, then you use that to your advantage. Jay, so twice now has grounded out to Kelly Johnson. Andrew McCutcheon, ball to the warning track in right field in the first. But he fell behind, remember, after DeGrom got a call, so we'll see how this at bat goes for him. And a check swing. Two up, two down brings up Gregory Polanco, the fourth annual celebration of. The Pittsburgh Pirates autograph and memorabilia show will take place on Saturday, June 25th at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. Appearances by Andrew McCutcheon, Garrett Cole, Jung Ho Gong, Starling Marte, Bill Mazeroski, Andy Van Slyke, and many more current and former Buckos. Admission is free. For signing schedule, pricing, and to order autograph tickets, go to phillyshow.com. During the upcoming homestand, which starts Monday night, San Francisco Giants are in for four. And then the Los Angeles Dodgers are in for a wraparound weekend series. Starting Friday night, the 24th. That Giant series includes a weekday matinee game on Thursday, the 23rd. Mets fan getting booed. Polanco singled the first pitch in the first inning. That's a tough play. I don't know if they could give an error for that. He's disappointed. I don't know, Greg. I, he just really didn't commit to that. I think he, he may have gator armed that a little. Maybe. He could have really went into the lane. Yeah. Now, if it had been a Met hitter hit it, well then, no, you can't do that. But or no, I got that backwards, don't I? Yeah, I do. If a Met hitter hit it, then you do want to get out there and mm -hmm. make sure that the Pirates don't catch it. So he was doing the right thing. Yeah. Gator, right? Mm -hmm. He was thinking all the way. Right. Yeah. Heads up. Definitely a good play. He was giving Flores plenty of room to try and make that catch. Should not have been booed. Can't believe DeGrom's at 47 pitches already. Two outs in the third inning. I almost can't believe that's correct. He's got 30 strikes, 18 balls. Yeah. 23 pitches last inning. Didn't realize it. Dan Worth and the pitching coach of the New York Mets watching. And he gets Alonco to chase. That's three punch outs for DeGrom. Two and a half played, nothing, nothing.
longtime Buck O'Neill Walker. He returns to Pittsburgh now wearing a Mets jersey. Plus, Andrew McCutcheon takes the all-time lead and hits at PNC Park inside Pirates Baseball. It is presented by Allegheny Health Network tonight after post-game on Root Sports. Little Connor Pereira taking in his first game. Family back in Pittsburgh watching. Connor looks like he's doing just fine. Here's James Loney. Now, how about Ty on pitch count? Not bad. 17. <laughs> <laughs> what did the DeGrom have? 48 at the end? Yeah. Big difference so far. Certainly in Ty on's favor. Although he's got one more inning to go to. Let's hope he's not at 48 because that means it's a rough inning. Loney's going to try to walk that one off. Oh, my God. oh. the knee. The left knee. Deep breath. Back in there. Traded over from the Padres within the last couple of weeks. He was playing in the minor leagues. One ball, two strikes on Loney, former first round pick of the Dodgers. Harrison and one down. So for Tyone, it is seven up, seven down. He's getting some quick ground ball outs uh, to this point of the game early. At Indy this season, he was four and two with a 204 ERA and 62 innings, 44 hits, six walks, and 62 innings down in the minors with 61 strikeouts. Kevin Plowecki and Rene Rivera sharing the catching duties these days while Travis Darno is on the disabled list. He has started his rehab down in the Mets minor leagues. 0 and 2. Sunsets. A reflection off the building in right center. But Jason Kendall. Yeah. Isn't it? Right. It sounded like it. Right on that guard. But I mean, he didn't like didn't jump move. back out of the way or anything. Just kind of almost moved his elbow with the flight of the ball. Yeah, that's exactly what Kendall used to do. For years, Kendall used to do that without a guard on. I could never understand that. And then he finally started wearing that guard. That had to just pound oh. that, that elbow, that tricep every mm -hmm. year after year. DeGrom swinging away. One for 16 at the plate. Looks down at Tim Tuffle, their third base coach. Over the last couple of years, more than ever, pitchers are allowed to hit in these situations. Gets it down, but now well, Jason thought about letting it go foul and then thought better of it. And it's the second out, but DeGrom gets the job done. You know, it probably would have went foul, but here's the thing. What if it doesn't? Now you get first and second, one out in a very tight, you know, no score ball game early on. So like the JSO just, you know, allowing the sacrifice to take place, getting the sure out, that was the right thing to do. 
You can see that ball as it came off the grass. It was headed probably for foul territory. But if he waits and it doesn't go foul, then it gets nobody. Good decision. Even if he gets a base hit here, still good to be. Good decision, no matter what. Alejandro Diaz, strike one, 96 from Tyone. He bounced out to Josh Harrison in the first. And a couple of strikes. Tyone out in front of this veteran, Alejandro Diaz, 0 and 2. Command of the curveball. Definitely been showing that. Dropped that one right in on top of the knees. And he strikes him out. There's a chase, a swing and a miss. Number three for Jamison Tyon. Scoreless through three. It's time for the Toyota RAV 4th inning. The all-wheel drive RAV hybrid has performance that will make you rethink hybrid. Let's go Bucks! Buccaneers here in New York. Nothing, nothing ball game. She wants Neil Walker back. Well, as we've talked a lot about last week when he came back and got that great ovation from fans it really so far seems to be a trade that's worked out uh, nicely for both Pirates and the Mets Starling Marte steps in and as we stressed last week when you talk about that trade Nice for Walker better include Josh Harrison as part of that because that deal opened up the spot for Harrison. One ball, one strike. He's in the hole. Chung Ho Gong on deck. Mets had a nice tribute on their uh, video board before the game from John Neese. Right on the inside corner. Working them in. Wants this one to bounce. And exactly what Plowecki wanted him to do and struck him out. Go downstairs to Robbie. Hey, talking about the John Neese tribute. Drafted in 2005 in the seventh round by the New York Mets. This is the only organization he's ever known. Spent the first eight years of the big leaguers. Called up in 2008 at age 21. That's a nice video that they showed. And it really caught him on surprise. There he is hanging on the top step of the dugout. The camera came up to him 
uh, inside the ballpark here and put him on the camera and uh, give a nice little uh, tip of the cap. As you see right there, really cool stuff. His teammates started howling as soon as they saw Garrett Cole just started hooting and hollering, and everybody had a good time with it uh, with John Neese. But he meant a lot to this organization over the last eight seasons before being traded uh, this past winter. All right, Robbie, as Jung Ho Gung takes ball one, he walked leading off the second. Headed up the middle. One out single. And Jung Ho Gong. He's got a nice contingent of fans on hand here. Cheering him on. One out single brings up Josh Harrison. Jung Ho has become a, a national story. It did last year toward the, the end before he got hurt. It wasn't just a a, a Pittsburgh you know, pirate story. I mean he was really and becoming known all around baseball as a really a middle of the lineup type contributor. He has fans everywhere we go. One and on Harrison struck out looking in the second. Now all for his last 13. Catches the corner. So he double checking with Hunter Wendelstead. This is DeGrom's fourth career start against the Pirates. Right there. One and two. So far four strikeouts for him and as Bob alluded to earlier he has struck out at least seven and four straight starts. Going back to May 21st against Milwaukee. It's another five for DeGrom and two down in the fourth inning. Breaking pitcher right on the edge. It was elevated though. That ball about belt high. That's a pitch that Jay Hay make contact with most of the time. Mercer hit a ground ball under Kelly Johnson's glove, the second baseman, and he was given a single. With two outs, this is a talk about crazy stats, Bob. How about with two outs, batters hit 329 against DeGrom this season? I can't really imagine why that should be. <laughs> it's just crazy, isn't it? Ball on a strike. Again, DeGrom was. The 2014 National League Rookie of the Year. Five days will turn 28 years old. He was nine and six in 2014 with a 269 ERA, won 14 games last year, 254 in run average. Granderson over and out of room. Young back to first with two down. Flawecki out to talk with DeGrom. It's 
still one and two. See the pitch count now at 65. He's gone over 100 pitches each of his last six starts. Most innings he's pitched this year, seven. He's done that three times, and he gets his sixth strikeout as he fans the side. Career big league start for Jamison Tyone as Garrett Cole was placed on the disabled list today. Wind Park University tweets the natural movement on Tyone's fastball is insane. His curveball, not fair. Tyone's curveball should be illegal. Hashtag filthy. I'm in love with the Tyone curveball. Hashtag let's go, Bucks. When AJ is talking about your curveball, you know you got a good one. Curve <laughs> it like Batman. Yeah, AJ Bergnett had quite a curveball, didn't he? <laughs> Here's Cabrera, fly to right in the first. And a strike on the inside corner at 94. Pulls this down the line and right. Two. Find that loving curveball now. Yeah. Good time for it. No, nope. went right upstairs and got the job done as it's popped up. Harrison, Mercer, it's Mercer. Struble Cabrera pops up to Jordy Mercer, one out here in the fourth. Tyon makes the start against the Mets, the same team, of course, against whom he made his big league debut last week. The last time a Pirates pitcher made his first two major league starts against the same team it was back in 2004. John Van Benscoten against Arizona, August 18th, and then again, August 23rd. Before that, you have to go way back to 1967 when Bob Moose made his first two major league starts against the Houston Astros. Thanks to the folks at Elias for that info. One ball, one strike on Curtis Granderson. He bounced out to Harrison.
One ball, two strikes. Nice slider from Tyone, and he's got every pitch he's got right now. He's just commanding, putting him where he wants. And bounces the fastball to Jaso. The second out. Brings up Joanna Cespedes. This Father's Day, join Major League Baseball and the Prostate Cancer Foundation in the fight against prostate cancer by supporting the Home Run Challenge. Log on to mlbcommunity.org or pcf.org to learn more. Bob, I'd like you to wear the, those glasses next time we're on TV, okay? Nope. You won't? Nope. Buccaneer glasses? I think that'd be so cool. Nope. Won't be wearing those. How about on Talk Like a Pirate Day? That'd be See Like a Pirate Day. No, I'm not going to wear those. Pretty adamant about that, aren't you? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I don't, when I don't like something, yeah. I let you know, right? Yes, you do. Oh, yeah. Two and zero, the count on Cespedes. All those red colors and everything reminds me of a, like a butterfly. Well, three and zero, all of a sudden. It's all right. Deep breath. All right, back at it. Kelly Johnson on deck. Three zero count. On Ioannis Cespedes. He's swinging, ground ball is short. He fastball down and away, he tried to pull it, rolled over on it, but he got it fouled. Several times today, especially with left handers, he's been able to get guys to pull balls that are down on the outside part of the plate, fastballs, and, and hit that ground ball. Hitting coach is Kevin Long. There's the ball pulled foul. Cespedes has been on a tear. Nine hits his last 23 at bats hitting over 400 during this stretch. Still three and two. Did not get a call. That was the curve. And that was a strike, but didn't get the call, so it's a two out walk. To bring this ball into the strike zone right there at the edge. Did, but it was called ball four. The high curveball is always tough to get called a strike. The entire flight in, it looks like it's going to be very high. By Josh Harrison in that shift. Nothing, nothing.
here in New York. First of three with the Mets. Our day on the motive this day in Pirates history, this day 1992, Bucks beat the Mets 5 4, finish off a three game series sweep. Game started as a matchup of aces. Dwight Gooden against Doug Drabeck. And events like two for three, two runs scored, drove in the game winning run with a ninth inning sacrifice fly brought in Gary Barr's show. Bucks' fourth straight game that the Pirates won by just one run back on this day in 1992. Yep, congratulations to the Stanley Cup champs. Interesting yesterday, the Pirates departed for New York just as the Stanley Cup champions were arriving. And Stewart takes 2-0. Slide to right in the second. Six strikeouts for DeGrom. Knows he's in a battle right now, doesn't he? Yeah. And again, uh, not to harp on this too much, but there's a strike that uh, he gets. Stewart's the, the Pirates catcher, so he knows all about this uh, Hunter Wendelstedt strike zone. Catching that man, that young man, Jameson Tyone. It's always tough for catchers, too. They got to kind of build a relationship a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they got to kind of balance things. They can't complain too much when they're hitting because they're wanting those same pitches when they're catching. You think they say that when they're at the plates? Hey, you, you, that's okay, but give, give me that call? Probably. Yeah. Easy for DeGrom. Stewart's still thinking about that. One away. DeGrom is trying to win his fourth game. As Tyon takes strike one and Andrew McCutcheon comparing notes with Stewart. Oh one two on Tyon. Easy for DeGrom there. Seven strikeouts. Brings up John Jaso. Ladies get on board with Pirates Baseball for a Lady Bucks night on Tuesday, June 21st. Packages include a game ticket, access to a pregame catered event, and a premium Pirates water bottle. Go to pirates.com slash ladybucks. Buy your Lady Bucks night tickets today. Tuesday, June 21st, the San Francisco Giants will be in. One week from tonight. It'll be game two of the series. Two four gamers. Four with the Giants, four with the Dodgers. Next home stand. You play four with the Giants, four with the Dodgers. Good chance you're going to see Madison Bumgarner and Clayton Kershaw on the same home stand. So buckle up. And here you're going to see DeGrom, Noah Syndergaard, and Bartolo Colon. One and two. Not going to be an easy schedule for quite a while. Yep. We see a lot of good pitching. Well, Jake Arrieta probably on Friday and Lester on Saturday. Here's Bartolo Colon, the ageless one. Read today that. Uh, Somebody was blaming Cologne for the downfall of James Shields. Oh, the home run? Yeah. Shields hadn't been able to get anybody out yeah. since. Two and two.
full count. There's this two out situation again. Talk about the batting averages against DeGrom with two outs, but tonight, gonna one hit with two outs, and he gets his eighth strikeout in the one, two, three, fifth inning. Locked in a pitcher's duel with Jamison Tyon. We get a look at his brother Jordan, second row behind the Pirates dugout. He's with a bunch of co workers from the New York Methodist Hospital. Jordan, Jameson's brother, lives here in New York City and is in his last year of his pulmonary critical care fellowship uh, here at a local hospital. Now, in a couple weeks, he's actually moving to Fort Myers, Florida. So, how's that for timing? Another good story about Jordan. He drove through the night when Jameson got his call up for his big league debut. He drove through the night, arrived at about 7.38 in the morning, took a nap in his parents' hotel room, then went and watched Jameson play, then drove all the way back through the night back to New York to work the next day on just a few hours sleep, part of the sacrifices that many of the Tyone family made to catch the big league debut. But good for Jordan tonight. Has a very short commute on the subway to watch his second big league start, Greg and Bob. Cool stuff to watch a sibling. Jameson Tyone, the youngest of four children. And to the shortstop, Wilmer Flores has retired 6 3. Tyone uh, definitely performing well in front of his brother. Mm -hmm. Born in Lakeland, Florida, grew up near Houston. His parents, both Canadian, Christy and Michael Tyone, born and raised in Canada, and the Tyone boys, three three boys, one girl, maintain their dual citizenship. Tyone, in fact, pitched for Team Canada in the World Baseball Classic three years ago. Ball one on James Loney bounced out in the third. Shout out to uh, Scott Summers. Watching in New Kensington, PA, he and his wife Lauren expecting their first child. Chance to talk with young John Nieder before the game. He was in the booth, Pittsburgh. Ground ball, broken bat. Harrison, two down. The 2013 World Baseball Classic pitching for Team Canada. Jamison Tyone went four innings in his start against Team USA and was very, very impressive. Getting Ryan Braun there at the end. First round pick, second overall in 2010. And unfortunately, like the other 
pitchers that the Pirates drafted in 2010. Hit by the Tommy John bug. Jameson Tyone underwent Tommy John surgery a couple years ago. Nick Kingham, who was the fourth pick in that 2010 draft, had Tommy John March of last year. Brandon Compton, the fifth pick by the Pirates in 2010. Tommy John surgery, March last year. And Casey Sadler, who was the 25th pick by the Pirates in 2010, he had Tommy John surgery last November. Francisco Liriano, of course, had it when he was with another organization. But that is an oddity. All those players drafted by the Pirates in 2010, those pitchers undergoing Tommy John. The I don't player, know if it's an oddity anymore. Yeah, probably right. Yeah, probably isn't. But Stetson Alley was picked second after Tyone and as a pitcher, but uh, he has since converted to uh, outfield now. Position player is. It goes to three and two on Kevin Ploiecki. Struck him out looking. What does Steve Blass like to say after five innings? Word gets around everywhere. Our guest, and he was asked by Amy if you had a sprint out song, and you should, what would it be? Wow, that's a good question. Maybe something by Tool. Uh, I also like uh, the Ultimate Warrior theme song. Honestly, I, I, I'm cool with just nothing because then my, you know, it's no one's really like you go out there with nothing, it's just the game. You don't need anything to pump you up. But I understand that closers get entrance songs, and I think Marks is awesome. But for me, uh, if I had one, maybe Tool. Or maybe uh, maybe the Ultimate Warrior theme song. Now the Ultimate Warrior theme song would be fantastic, but the only problem with a sprint out song, Greg and Bob, for Jared Hughes is if they played it by the time he ran out, you get like 10 seconds of the song. Wouldn't last very long because that's how quick he gets there. How much fun is it to watch that gate open and see him come sprinting in? And how nice a guy is Jared Hughes? What you see is what you get. Andrew McCutcheon, 0 for 2. And pops up the first pitch. Over by the dugout, and Plowecki can't hold on. Thank you, says Andrew McCutcheon. Not an easy play for a catcher to get over there and make that play. This is one you like your uh, first baseman, if he can get there in time to try and take charge of. They gave Ploiecki an error. That's a tough error. My yeah, goodness. Is. Still going to get him. Ploiecki moments ago 
was frustrated by the strikeout call Tyone got in the bottom of the fifth. This is the pitch. Tyone got the call and Plawecki wasn't happy about that. Nothing to say though. The Grom's getting them also. On the way, Gregory Polanco has one of the three hits in this ball game. All hits on the Pirate side. Grama struck out eight. Gave up the two out single to Polanco in the first. Walked Jung Ho Gun to start the second. And then after a strikeout of Josh Harrison, gave up a ground single by Jordy Mercer that's debatable. Could have been an error. And he retired the next two. Gave up a one out hit to Gung in the fourth. That's been it. Piazza over, but it's out of play. Third baseman Flores also out. At 86 pitches, looking as though the pitch count is uh, going to be DeGrom's worst enemy. Two starts back, 110 pitches against the Chicago White Sox in his seven innings of work. Struck out to end the third. One ball, two strikes, one away in the sixth. Still one and two. Lefties hitting 231 against DeGrom, righties 252. Four hundred five strikeouts through his first sixty two career starts. That's the third most strikeouts. Through a pitcher's first sixty two starts in New York Mets franchise history. Behind Dwight Gooden who struck out five hundred twelve in his first sixty two and teammate Matt Harvey. Four hundred twenty five punch outs. Full count. Terrific. Just outstanding pitching here Tom, in New York over the years. Tom Seaver. One of many over the years. Ball toward the left center field gap. It is going to slice toward Deaza for the second out. Brings up Starling Marte. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. Includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. And what a pitcher's matchup we are watching here between Jacob DeGrom and Jamison Tyon. This is reminiscent of the September 13th 1988 duel between Dwight Gooden and Bob Walk. Here in New York at the old Shea Stadium. That day you beat Gooden one nothing. That's right. Bobby Bonilla and RBI double in the fourth inning count for the lone run. You went eight gave up five hits. But that was commonplace when you were hooked commonplace. Up, yes. Hooked up with one of my uh, one of my poor games here. A base hit, a roller into left for Marte. A two out single. 
Right. Base hits going to extend the inning a little bit and perhaps push Degrom over the hundred pitch mark. He's sitting at 94, still an out away from getting out of the sixth inning. And Jung Ho Gong has reached base safely both times up, a walk and a single. You would think that uh, Marte will take a shot at second base here. Next couple of pitches. That would have been a good one to run on. Change up down out of the strike zone. This year opponents are 0 for 3 attempting to steal with the ground on the hill. Marte takes that as a challenge. Yep. He's going. The ground. Drive deep to left center field and clear the deck. Cannonball coming. Chung Ho Gong gives the Pirates a 2 0 lead here in the sixth with a line drive homer. His ninth. A bullet. <laughs> That's an absolute bullet. That ball up into the uh, original seats. Almost in, in center field, basically. A line drive. You can't hit a ball. Much better than that. DeGrom was dumbfounded. Yeah, he just where did he, the look on his face was, was kind of like, how did that happen? Yeah, that's right. That's where and that ball. Follow that up with a bunt single for Josh Harrison. That ends the 0 for 14 hitless string. It'll be Jay Hayes a turn to see if he can steal a base. Watch this. That ball landed. <laughs> you know, Greg, we were watching there with from that view from down the first baseline, and you could see how DeGrom was holding, 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 holding on the ball. Really bothered Marte to the fact that he started to lean back toward first. That's when DeGrom went home. So you think and that that's the reason I bring that up messing with Marte perhaps did that take away something he left that pitch up in the strike zone it was about belt high and sometimes you, you split your you know your attention where you're really concentrating on between first base and the plate that can happen traveled some four hundred twenty four feet. Left the bat at 111 miles an hour. Yeah, that had to have some very good exit velocity because it just didn't have uh, much height. Just left 18 at a, degrees. Yeah, left, left, left at a very low angle. Tough to hit a home run with an 18 degree angle. Yeah. There goes Harrison. And into center field. And Jay Hay will motor to third. Stolen base in an air. Well, now there's one in the successful category. That's his 12th steal in 13 attempts for Josh Harrison. Jay Hay. Is there ever a time he's not looking to go the extra 90 feet? As he's sliding, he's already thinking, get the third. Stolen base E2, second error for Plowecki. Jamison Tyone, bat in hand. Terry Collins has the bullpen up. Jim yeah, Henderson. He, he, DeGrom had two outs and about 90 pitches. Was that two outs? So he had, he had an opportunity to really pitch another inning in this ballgame. But now, because of everything happening here with two outs and the the stolen base, and, you know, dropping down that bunt. More pitches have to be thrown, and now he's up over 100. Plus, he's given up a couple of runs now. The opportunity to extend his outing is quickly going away. Just the fifth homer he's given up this season, by the way. Todd Frazier hit one, two starts back against him. Frazier now with the White Sox, the Brewers, Ramon Flores. 
Carlos Gonzalez of the Rockies and Will Myers of the Padres and Jung Ho Gung is now on that list. Sometimes you can tell the mindset of a pitcher by just watching him out there in the mound. He just caught a throw back barehanded with his right hand. You know he's mad. He's not happy at all right now. Full count. And he picks up the strikeout, but a base hit by Sterling Marte after two were out, and then the Jung Ho Gung line drive home run, Gung's ninth. Launches this one deep into left center field. Two nothing Pirates. Sports is brought to you by the all-new Chevy Cruze and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Barrel. Our service centers are now open evenings and weekends. Visit BarrelService.com for more. Let's go box. Jacob DeGrom done for the night. Giving up the two-run homer to Jung Ho Gong. And Juan Lagares will pinch hit for DeGrom to start this bottom of the sixth inning. Jung Ho Gong, Point Park University tweets. Bucko's Cove, man, that home run was an absolute missile. Gong crushed it. Boy, oh boy, Jung Ho Gong hits the ball hard. Gong, line drive home run. Gorris recovered enough from the uh, partial ligament tear of the left thumb that he could have started tonight had it not been for what the Mets were calling a bad tooth. Couple of strikes. Jamison Tyone has allowed two base runners. He hit Kevin Plowecki with one out in the third, walked Ioannis Cespedes with two outs in the fourth. Come in. Way in. Oh, Stewart out. Just whacked hard with the bat. Oh, boy. Man, he is so beat up right now. Didn't need that. Clint Hurdle, Ben Potenziano. I'll come in and check on him. Assistant trainer. I think this got all masked. 
Greg. I think that, that, that got him in the boy, oh boy. Just below the ear, maybe. Mm. I don't think any health network super mo look. Oh, All yeah. right. With the right below the, the mask and knocked the mask forward. It, it was below the ear. That was a tough one. Oh, you can see, look how red is it. Yeah, yeah. Neck and jaw mm -hmm. in line is where that butt bat hitting. Stewart's pretty tough. Yeah, he is. Remember the other day, he got hit in the, hit the arm shoulder with a quick pitch, and, and it was like a, like a bee sting yeah. or something. He really shrugs a lot of stuff off. Toward third, Gong backs up on that last top, throws out Lagaris to start the sixth. Oh, Tyone. Will face the lineup for a third time. You see how efficient he has been. Oh, pitch counts amazing. 60. Faces Deaza, who's bounced out and struck out. Starts him out with a strike. I love that curveball. You and Bergnet. <laughs> yeah, I sure love the command he has of that pitch. You know, for a curveball that has such good bite and break to it, you know, there's a lot of guys that can throw one like that, but who knows where it's going to end up? Because you know, you're having to really snap it off so hard. He, he really is able to command that pitch. Two and one. Bounce to Jaso. That's a fair ball. Looks like it skipped off the bag. Luckily, not a bad hop and two down. Well, how many soft ground balls have I hit? It's going to say soft contact. Soft ground balls. Yep, that one hit. Right on top of the bag. He's got 10 ground ball outs. Struble Cabrera to the plate has uh, flied out and popped up. His brother probably getting a little more uh, anxious now, nervous as each batter is retired. Really be nervous if he gets Cabrera here. Two and one. Curtis Granderson on deck. Chopper, right side. Another weak ground ball. The story is Jamison Tyone, and it's becoming a national story tonight. His brother, fans here, and now across the country are watching Jamison Tyone. Six innings of brilliance in his second major league start. And that pitch count extremely efficient. Two base runners. Today marks the U.S. Army's 241st birthday. USAA honors those who have served in the U.S. Army and all of our service members around the world.
over some instructions for Jamison Tyon. And he gets to the plate. Talking about maybe bunting. See if uh, Chris Stewart can get on base against the new pitcher, Jim Henderson. Oh, and he will get on. Yeah, he did. He is getting beat up this past week. He has really taken it hitting all with, over the place. They're hitting him in the jaw with bats. Man, he's fouling balls off his foot. First it, pitch fastballs and the pitch. Yeah, the quick ribs. pitches. Oh, right in the rib cage. <laughs> I hate to laugh, but it's it's uncanny what's, uh, yeah. what you're seeing from. I mean, again, all aspects. The batter, in his mind, he had to be. He's, yeah. he's thinking, really? Yeah. Tyone gets the bunt down and put on a clinic. Oh yeah. <laughs> first pitch, get it down, bunt it to first. Part of, the, uh, you know, part of the poise you uh, talked he, about. He's at the not outside. doing much wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Second major league start. Like he's been here for years. Jim Henderson's numbers. Jason 0 for three against Degrom. Jacob Degrom went six, gave up. Two runs on six hits. Struck out nine. And softly hit. Nice stop there by Estrubo Cabrera to get it out. A real fine job, good job of base running by Stewart. He had to hold until that ball hit the ground, even though it was hit to his left. And Stewart, he had to wait, wait, wait. Then when he sees it hit, and he can take off for third. Excellent play by Estrubo Cabrera. Longtime Indian shortstop. Now Andrew McCutcheon. 0 for 3. And he pops it up. James Loney. Oh. Hit batter doesn't amount to anything. The Pirates have a 2 0 lead and all eyes on Jamison Tayo.
championship in the Countersport area. Thanks for watching and rooting on your Pittsburgh Pirates. All of us at Root Sports and the Pirates appreciate your support. Countersport PA. The UPMC scoreboard, it is 2-0, and that tells the story. All you need to know, that bottom line, Jamison Tyone. Faces Curtis Granderson. Juanes Cespedes, Kelly Johnson. He has to know, right, Bob? He's got to be. He's got. He's aware of what's going on here. Oh yeah, he, he realizes that you're only throwing 68 pitches and you got a chance for a complete game. Yeah. Sean Rodriguez at first base. Couple of strikes on him. Tyone retired the first seven. A six pitch first inning. A ten pitch second inning. And after getting James Loney to ground out in the third, he hit Kevin Ploiecki. Following a sacrifice bunt. Ploiecki moved to second. The only time they've had a man in scoring position. And then he struck out Alejandro Deaza with two outs in the fourth. He walked to an Cespedes. Right side. And there's the first hit of the ball game. Curtis Granderson, a seeing eye single. Six innings of no hit ball for Jamison Tyone. Pick six, right? That was a curveball. But it still was just soft contact, ground ball. Just happened that this one was nowhere anybody could catch it. Had everybody on that side of the field, just still found a hole. Now Cespedes. And now we'll see how Jamison Tyon reacts to this. Oftentimes, guy pitches a no-hitter this late in the ball game, you'll see a bit of a letdown. This is just his second major league start. Three times in the modern era has a pitcher tossed a no hitter in his first or second career start. Bobo Holloman for St. Louis, the Browns, against the Philadelphia Athletics in his first career start in 1953 after four relief appearances. In August of 1991, Wilson Alvarez. Well, the White Sox no hit the Orioles in his second career start. One hop shot. Could be two. One and two. Double play. Smash to Gung. And there's two outs. Ground ball after ground ball. And then this one really, if you're going to have a hit at somebody, you want it to be a little on the firm side. And that one was, which made it a nice double play ball. Gong to Harrison to Rodriguez. And two for the price of one keeps that pitch count down and it brings up Kelly Johnson. The other pitcher by the way who tossed a no hitter. In his first or second career start Clay Buckholes with the Red Sox in September of 2007. His second career start no hit the Orioles. Two and oh. One of the harder hit balls of the night it was by Johnson in the fourth inning. Lined out to Josh Harrison out in shallow right. Harrison made the diving catch. Now Tyone falls behind 3 0. Well, that's too bad. He had it going. Thought he had a chance. Hurdle on the bullpen phone. Still would have been kind of a record for me, though. I mean, it would have been just his second appearance. Ground ball. 
A one hit shutout through and, seven innings. And those other two were in the American League, which doesn't count. That's right. Excellent point, Bob. You're right on it. Jamison Tyone story. Tossing a no hitter through six. Gave up the leadoff hit to Curtis Granderson, then got the double play and another ground out. He has been absolutely brilliant. Just his second big league start. Now Gregory Polanco, the Pirates, trying to get him some more runs here against Jim Henderson. Polanco, one of the six hits against DeGrom. Remember when we were showing the uh, the matchup between the Mets and the Pirates the last couple of seasons, mm -hmm. and that Met batting average was yeah. below 200. So that's how you really dominate the series is you keep the other team hitting below 200. Well, that just went down. Yeah. Or to this point, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing the the mastery of the Pirates pitching over these Mets. Polanco Marte Gong. James Loney, the first baseman for the New York Mets, acquired after Lucas Duda was placed on the disabled list. Loney has grounded out weekly twice against Tyone. He's gotten 14 outs thanks to the ground ball. And Polanco works the leadoff walk. Let's check out the Nissan Road ahead as Jim Henderson allows the leadoff man on again. He hit Chris Stewart to start last inning. Jeff Locke will go tomorrow night against Noah Syndergaard. And then Thursday night, Juan Nicasio against Bartolo Colon. We'll give Nicasio an extra day after he threw 42 pitches in relief of Garrett Cole on Friday. Mm -hmm. 
Hit well towards center field over and headed toward the wall and gone. Sterling Marte. With a two run homer it is a four nothing ball game that's his sixth home run of the season. Cespedes went back looked as though he might have a shot and then looked up and it clears the fence. Now that's not a home run that you know puts your team ahead or anything like that but it's still I think in that category of clutch home run. You know a two run lead you know that's OK but. It's still like the game is still maybe in jeopardy but when you can push it to four that is huge that's a big home run for Marte. Also gives Tyone a, that little bit of a cushion now. Oh. Put it on a tee. Yeah. Marte swing. John Ho Gong, who homered his last time up. Oh, Flores trying to make the catch, loses his glove. Robbie will help. Robbie, him. Robbie's got it. There you go, Robbie. Thank you. Marte sixth. Reaches in and just knocks the glove right off of it. Robbie went down, picked the glove up, gave it back to him. Oh, I think he stepped on it a couple times first. Looked like Robbie was extremely polite. I think he should have stepped on it. Yeah. Seth, you're right. All right. <laughs> Looks like he lost his headset. Flores was over there. You're in the line of fire, when you? Mm -hmm. Over there, right at field level. Filming the action. Filming. <laughs> hey, Steve. <laughs> you so he's a it. filmmaker. You got to take it. Yeah. Develop, develop it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how about that swing? Fitch way and he just one-handed it. Homered his last time up. This is the old uh, emergency hack. So, uh, whoops, stay alive. Look at that. Yep. Okay, fought it off. That's all right. Now you get to see another one. Yeah. Whoop. He's something. And the next pitch he lines towards center field, and Cespedes <laughs> makes the catch. Nice running catch about knee high. Jung Ho Gong walk single line drive homer line drive out. Puts this one right in the very pocket of the glove. Got to come out of there. One out of the top of the eighth. Here's Josh Harrison. Charlie Marte's home run. Five of them, five of the six, have been hit on the road this season. He has been on quite a tear the last month or so.
couple of two run homers in this one. Gong in the sixth following the Marte single and Marte here in the eighth following the walk to Polanco. And struggles continue, but his Pirates leading 4 0. And Harrison didn't miss that by a whole lot. We'll fly to Cespedes. Two down and out, Jordy Mercer. Volkswagen National League East standings. The Mets five back of the Nationals. Marlins seven back. Washington trailing the Cubs in D.C. How about those Marlins up over 500? But they, they were impressive when we were down there in Miami. They're taking on the Padres tonight. Cubs lead the Nats three to one, heading to the bottom of the seventh. Mercer after his base hit in the second struck out the next two times against DeGrom who went six walked one struck out nine six hits the two run homer by Gong. Jamison Tyone. And now you do think now that the no hitter is gone is it possible he could go nine innings in his second major league start talked about how rare that has become these days the complete game. Jeff Locke has the only complete game this season for the Pirates. Well, at this point, it certainly doesn't look like a pitch count will be the deciding factor. There's Jeff Locke. There are six teams in the National League that don't have a complete game yet, including the Mets, which is kind of hard to believe of all teams in this rotation. The Mets, Marlins, Padres, Brewers, Braves, and Rockies. Complete gameless. It's all about pitch count, Craig. And yep. And saves. Stephen Matz. Candidate for Rookie of the Year. Matt Harvey, they think uh, he's close to being back as the dark night after some struggles this season two and two American League teams without a complete game the Blue Jays Royals Rangers Yankees Orioles and Oakland Athletics There's Garrett Cole on the disabled list. And remember, in the American League, too, you're not pinch hitting for your pitcher. Yeah. So still can't get him through nine innings. Ryan Vogelsong, Cole uh, protecting Ryan Vogelsong. Any foul ball. Yeah. Vogelsong has been through the surgery. Should be watching the game with a catcher's mask on. Oh. My, looks a little bruised up, huh? It's a lot better than it did. He had hit in the eye a few weeks ago at PNC Park while batting. Yeah, it's not a uh, not an easy thing to watch. Starling Marte, it is sixth home run of the season. Two run shot, giving the Pirates and Jamison Tyone this four nothing lead. Six outs to go. Will Tyone get them all?
Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Kenny Ross, Total Confidence Pricing, and by Levin Furniture, the official furniture and mattress supplier to the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks! 4-0 ball game. The Jamison Tyone story. Making his second major league start. Both starts against the New York Mets. Pitched no hit ball through the first six innings before giving up a leadoff hit to Curtis Granderson in the seventh. And Tony Watson loosens in the Pirates bullpen. Well, that might be an indication that Clint Hurdle won't give uh, Tyone much wiggle room. You might have to have a one two three inning. Here. Yeah. Should be one. As uh, Flores. Wasn't actually. Busting it down the line so Mercer had plenty of time to kind of regroup. Set himself and. That's the first out. Another ground ball 15 ground ball outs. Tyon once this season threw 100 pitches for Triple A Indianapolis. Exactly 100. That was on May the 9th. His June 3rd start against Toledo, the Triple A affiliate of the Tigers, he threw 99 pitches in his first big league start against these Mets six days ago, 91 pitches. And a little flare going to drop in for the second hit. Kevin Plowecki. Matt Reynolds comes out on deck. You saw Euclides Rojas, the bullpen coach, going to the phone to call. That's no, just to say he's ready. Make sure that the dugout stays informed as to what's going on in the bullpen. How about a ground ball and an infielder? Deep third, not a double play ball. They'll get one. Two away. Guy can play some third base. Can yes, he? he can. He is really, really a nice glove guy to have down there. You know, usually when you move a guy that's been, you know, for the most part of his career, a shortstop, moving more to third, he's going to give you some good defense. And, uh, that's definitely the case with Jung Ho. Michael Conforto, left handed hitter, is going to be announced as the pinch hitter, and Clint Hurdle is poised and then steps back. He had a uh, one foot on the bottom dugout step. He's on the phone. Thank you. Very polite there, is it? Thank you. Fordo has been bothered by a sore wrist. Strike one. I answered the phone here one time in Shea Stadium when it was a radio only game, and so I was off that day and I, I went to the bullpen and helped warm up pitches back in the days I was younger. And I couldn't understand. And I told Spin, I think Spin was a bullpen coach then. Spen goes, who'd they say? I said, I'm not sure, but they're not happy, and I'm not going to. I'm not calling back. So Spen, Spen had Spen to Williams. call back. Yeah. By the way, Tyon is due up second next inning, so this is probably it anyway. He's approaching 90 pitches. That is his 90th pitch. Well, if he's able to get out of here in 90 some pitches, 
then I you know it's four nothing you could conceive it but why not let him go ahead and and hit you could he could get the game over in 15 pitches in the ninth. So I, just, I mean it's still possible. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. It's I not just, likely I don't but see it's it still possible. With, with, I don't think Clint Hurdle will do it. And if that indeed is his last batter it is truly a special night for Jamison Tyone maybe peeking up toward his brother. Jit, how about this start tonight? Really a, an outstanding start, just like what we saw in that first one where he's able to throw all of his pitches. It doesn't matter what it is in his arsenal, he's able to put it where he wants to. Very impressive tonight, uh, getting the ground ball. I mean, that, that's probably the story so far tonight, because he was getting not, not only the ground ball, but soft contact. But uh, just really, there was no pitch that he didn't have going. And there you see the, the base hit came on the curveball, but the curveball was really good. As he showed right there to uh, end his night with that hard strikeout, or that hard curveball for the strikeout. His brother was loving it, obviously. There's the line. The two hits were not hard hits. The, the hardest hit ball tonight was Kelly Johnson's. And he lined out in the fourth inning to second baseman Josh Harrison in that shift. Now Chris Stewart pops the first pitch up. One out. Eric Adele, the new pitcher. Not much action yet for Goodell, just an inning. Matt Joyce will pinch hit. Goodell made his season debut just two days ago and some more tweets on Jamison Tyone. What a performance. Six no hit innings in your second major league start. Yeah, Tyone is the real deal. What a start though, Tyone. What a start. What a shot in the arm this is to see this tonight. Remember what Garrett Cole did in the summer of 2013, how important he was to the rotation to the team. He was called up. And uh, good news is that he'll just miss one start essentially one more and then we'll see him next weekend against the Dodgers. And you have to figure a, a rotation that will no doubt include Tyone. And uh, that would mean Tyone would pitch Sunday in Chicago. More hugs. One and two on the pinch hitter, Matt Joyce. 
He bats for Jamison Tyone. Quite a quite a show Sunday night if uh, if he does stay on track and he does pitch Sunday night for the Bucks Tyone against the Chicago Cubs national TV Joyce down on strikes. Again, if he stays in the rotation and he goes on five days after that, you could be looking at a Friday night matchup against the Los Angeles Dodgers for Tayo. Sean Rodriguez. His first at bat is a fly out to center field. Three more outs. Get the first win on this road trip and a five game losing streak. Tony Watson will be coming on. By the authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates continue this series from City Field tomorrow night. Join us starting at 6.30 with Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason here on Root Sports. Jeff Locke against Noah Syndergaard tomorrow. Uh, but Robin against Thor. <laughs> That's right. A couple superheroes. Yep. Well, Tony Watson, after three straight outings where he gave up at least a run, has bounced back to pitch three scoreless outings. Just a bump in the road, perhaps, for Tony Watson. There's Thor tomorrow night. Syndergaard, six and two, an ERA of two. To right field over Polanco, and it's past him. On an 0-1 pitch, Deaza doubles to right. Almost kind of shocking to see somebody in a Met uniform hit a ball like that. They've done not much with the bat tonight. But apparently, they're not going to go quietly here in the ninth. That was Matt Reynolds. My apologies. Matt Reynolds pinch hitting for Deaza. Melanson uh, warming up in the Pirate pen.
Cabrera 0 for 3. I bring that up Lanson out there in that pen because you're always at anytime he is up you're looking at the save type situation and they're one base runner away for from being in that. We've talked about that a lot over the last season or so and it's become just automatic in baseball that when a manager has an opportunity to get his closer a save it just bang bring him in. One and two. Jameson Tyone between Vogelsong and Cole. Broken bat, Gung. One away. So two outs away now from his first major league win, Jamison Tyone. Is there a way to describe that feeling? Is it? It really is special, obviously. Well, right? And it's going to be major league win. It, yeah, it, it's going to be watching it. It's going to be awesome right now yeah. for him because it, the, the type of game he pitched is was special. Mm -hmm. I mean, flirting with the no hitter. I mean, it, this is pretty amazing stuff for Jamison. You have your, your brother sitting there behind the dugout watching you. I mean, this is an incredible night. It will be a night that he remembers for the rest of his life. There's his brother Jordan in the middle. Ball on a strike. Is it an. You have to wonder. A, a, an anxious feeling, nervous feeling for Tyone right now. You know, well, hurry up, get a, it done. Maybe a, yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, he got that cushion. It's not like it's a one nothing game. I mean, that was a tying run out of second. <laughs> yeah, he'd be very anxious right now. He's still pretty cool and calm, I would imagine. Not like he's not always cool and calm. But even when guys have that appearance, you yeah. know, like his mouth. Never presence, let him see a you sweat. You never know yeah. what might be going on inside. Yeah. You know, might be really nervous. Pitched no hit ball through six innings before this man broke it up with a ground single to lead off the seventh. Later, James Loney, soft single the other way in the eighth inning. The only two hits against Tyone. And down to one out to go. As Watson strikes out Granderson looking. What a night. You know, I mean, that's you come into this ballpark against these Mets with that pitching staff they have, you have to outpitch them. And they certainly outpitched them tonight. So Tyone watches now and see if Watson can get Cespedes. It's kind of like when you go to Colorado, you got to out hit him. You got to hit some ground, some home runs to win the game. You know that's going to be that type of a matchup. Well, this is the type of matchup you get here in this ballpark. Well, it's kind of uh, very special when you're going with a guy making his second major league start against one of the better pitchers in the league. And you come out on top. Yeah, you bested him. Yeah, I mean that's this. Not only a great night for Tyon, but it's a really nice night for the Pirate team. Exactly, the organization. It, there was so much fanfare when Cole came up in 2013 because the Pirates were still in the midst of those losing ways. Well, now they've been winning for three years and reason to smile. And of course Cole will be anxious to get back in the rotation but Tyone again is that type of pitcher.
Two balls, two strikes, two outs, man on second. Deep. Foul. But you're right, that was deep. <laughs> Cespedes with 16 home runs. Tied for fourth in the National League. To the second baseman, Josh Harrison raised the Jolly Roger. For Mr. Tyone, Jameson Tyone. Chung Ho Gong's home run turned out to be the only runs Tyon and Watson would need, but for good measure and insurance, Starling Marte hit a two run shot, and the Pirates, with their third shutout of the season, end a five game losing streak. Well, that's a, an awesome story. You keep your fingers crossed, I think, now, Greg, uh, to see if Tyone can become that same type of pitcher that Cole was. I mean, that's. That's not an automatic thing no matter how good he was in the minor leagues and no matter what he looks like now you still have to wait and see but it looks pretty good at this point uh, from this vantage point that to say yep they're going to have a good one in that rotation for quite some time but you can't do anything more than what he did tonight. He goes eight shutout innings two hits had no hit the Mets through six. He and Tony Watson combine on the four nothing shutout and the Pirates get the W more to talk about back to Pittsburgh Robin Teague. 